Hi guys, how are you doing? Um, I'm Hannah Martin, I am the Pro and Artistry Manager for Bobby Brown UK and Ireland and today I shall be filming for you um, a quick practice of the bridesmaid's makeup I shall be wearing as a bridesmaid on Friday. Um, I'm not entirely sure when this video will go up um, maybe it'll be Sunday if I'm super speedy, but it might be a week later. Um, so do check my Instagram page for pictures of the wedding. Um, it's one of my best friends, Annabelle, getting married. I couldn't be more excited. But I just wanted to have a quick practice of the bridesmaid's makeup look, because I'll be doing Annabelle's makeup um, whilst guiding the bridesmaids on theirs. We are all wearing um, dusty pink, so I'm wearing a dusty pink top. Um, in honour of the look. And I've chosen some colours next to me, so let's see how they go. Now, I just filmed um, my bridal base for my Instagram. Do check it out if you haven't seen it. But for those of you that haven't, um, my favourite bridal base always starts with a couple of key essentials. So I love to prep bride's skin with the Vitamin Enriched Face Base because I feel it does a really good job of hydrating the skin and preparing the skin for makeup, but it's not too rich and it doesn't give the skin too much slip, so you eliminate kind of unwanted shine. I prepped under my eye with some bisque corrector just to brighten and get rid of any blue under my eye. I then used my instant full cover concealer in beige on top of my corrector for really clean under eyes, that I will set with powder shortly. I prep my skin with two skin foundation sticks. So warm beige first, being my skin tone correct colour, and then chestnut I use as um, a gentle bronze. Now I love to do this because it just ensures that I'm layering base with um, really photographic cream-based product and then I set everything with powder later. I then used a little bit of pale pink blush just on the apples of my cheek. But what I'll do is I'll get into my eye makeup and then um, eyes and lips and then I'll tweak my base just so it is completely camera ready. So as us bridesmaids will be wearing a dusty pink, um, I've created a soft palette using similar colourways, so ivory for under my brow bone, antique rose for the crease and silver moon for a little bit of sparkle. But as always, I'm going to start my eye makeup with one of these gorgeous shadows. This is the Sand Dune Long Wear Cream Shadow Stick and I want to apply this first to create a really long wearing base for the powder to adhere to. So I'm just gonna smooth out my lid first, just make sure I've gotten rid of any remnants of concealer. And then I'm just going to sweep that over my lower lid and bring it up into the crease of the eye. And you'll see it's just a really gorgeous, neutral kind of flesh tone which is perfect for this kind of look because this look isn't about creating my very best out out makeup it's about creating timeless classic eye makeup that will make all us bridesmaids look pulled together and pretty but not overdone once the Sand Dune Long Wear Cream Shadow Stick's in place, I'm just going to take a touch of the ivory shadow and just push this under my brow bone. I like to do quite a lot at first, just to ensure that we get a really lifted, highlighted brow. I do it matte to start with because I might well go back and add some shimmer at the end. Now, I've just zoomed in for you guys. Now that that's on, I'm gonna take an eyeshadow brush, go into the antique rose. I'm just gonna buff that through the crease of the eye just to intensify the crease a little further. So I'm not taking it right onto the lid, I'm simply blending back and forth so we can see 
that soft, neutral, warm pink coming through. I specifically haven't gone for too much of a blue based pink, just because the bluer the pink on the eye, actually the harder it is to wear. So the more neutral the pink, the better. Lovely. Now I'm going to take a tiny bit of the Antique Rose on my angled shadow brush and just sweep it along the lower lashes just to give a subtle wash of colour so that when I come to do my mascara along the lower lash line it blends into it. Now I was undecided as to what to do for liner but I thought recently I've worn my blackest black ink liner and I've absolutely loved it. So I'm going to do um, a quick liner first with the blackest black ink liner. I might then double line with a shadow but let's see how this black goes because of course with black you get the ultimate definition. So I'm just going to blend the tip of the pen all the way along my lash line, right into the inner corner of the eye. And you see I like to go in small strokes first. just to get it into the base of the lid. Great, so I've got the first half of my eye done. Now I like to go from the outer corner and sweep in. In a slightly bolder move, Great. Just to get the slightest hint of a flick. I've then chosen mahogany shadow, which I love. So with the liner brush and the mahogany, I'm just going to very gently double line, just sweeping the mahogany over the edge of the blackest black ink liner, just so it's a slightly softer, slightly more romantic finish. And I shall be doing the same with Annabelle, my bride. Pretty. Let me match up the other side quickly. Someone on my Instagram asked me literally yesterday for a little bit of mascara technique. So let me do my best to explain up close how I do my mascara. I'm starting with my smoky eye mascara and with a mirror that I'm holding below my chin, I look down into the mirror and then just drag from the base of the lashes right to the tip. And this first little bit, I do relatively slowly to ensure 
that I get the mascara and my lashes more importantly really wedged into the bristles of the hair to ensure that the product is distributed through the lashes really evenly. Once I've got that first layer on, I then speed up my application. I haven't re-dipped the wand yet, but I speed up a bit just to layer the mascara in place. And then when I'm happy with the finish, I'll then go back into my mascara, get some more product and work at layering. So I make the lashes look that little bit more dense. Sometimes I'll layer up formulas and I'm certainly going to do that today because this is a bridal uh, makeup tutorial. I'm going to take some of my No Smudge Mascara over the top to ensure that whatever mascara I've done is locked in place. So now with my trusty No Smudge Mascara, you'll not see it me at a wedding without one of these. I'm just going to go over what I've done, creating a bit like a raincoat effect to the mascara already applied. What I do like to do is I just like to run it over the tip of the lashes gently to ensure complete saturation. Let's just get those in a corner one, shall we? Then once that's done, I just like to look up and I tease the tip of the wand onto my lower lashes and I personally find this easier than having my brush sideways purely because I'm slightly messier I found when I've had my brush sideways so I like to tickle or tease the lashes from above. Okay, so that's my eyes done for now. Guys, I hope this light is better. I've got myself round up against a corner in the wall. Um, yeah, just to try and ensure that the lighting isn't quite as harsh. Um, so I already filled in my brows with the medium brow kit. I'm just gonna give them a quick brush. And before I do anything else, I just want to set them with the waterproof brow shaper. Again, I know that um, come Friday, there'll be lots of hugs and kisses with great friends and I want to ensure that my brows stay in place. I'm just taking the clear brow shaper, which is now waterproof, thank goodness, and sweeping it through my brows so that they stay fixed and in place all day. Through the T-zone, I'm going to use a bit of my yellow retouching powder. This stuff is genius on camera. So it's something that um, myself and the rest of the protein use a lot on set and in photo shoots. And I'm just going to dab that under my eye just to make sure I eliminate any sheen from my concealer and just set it into the main areas of the face that I don't want to have excess shine. And it really does give the skin a wonderfully matte, um, blown out finish. So you'll often find me on the morning of a wedding going through the bridal party with my retouching powder just to get everyone um, mattified ready for the wedding. So I did earlier a little bit of pale pink blush. Let me just top that up a touch, mainly here just over the apple of the cheek. It's amazing how quickly colour can drain from the face. So a little more blush is often 
preferable. Pretty. But I want to ensure that my cheeks have a little bit of um, a lasting glow. So I'm going to take my favourite Pink Quartz Shimmer Brick and just swirl my angled face brush over the colours and just very lightly dust over the higher points of my cheekbone for a little extra bridal glow. Oh, that's lovely. And I love the pink quartz because it's a it's like a beigey golden pink. So yes, you get that soft pink highlight, but it's not too pink, but it's also not my everyday bronze, which you know I love, but it could look a little bit too dark. Now on to lips. Um, I prepped my lips earlier with some lip balm, absolutely key before any lipstick application. But I'm gonna take a bit of my Pink Mauve lip pencil and I'm just going to very gently outline my lips. It's funny, I can't do this and talk. <laughs> Okay, and then fill in gently. Just so I've got a little bit of a lip stain created with my lip pencil. Great, then over that I'm gonna take a little bit of an Art Stick Liquid Lip, and this is Naked Pink, and I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of that on top. So there I've created a long wearing, long lasting lip base. I do like to brighten my lips a little, so I'm gonna use some of the Pink Nude Luxe Lip Color and just sweep that over the top. All that's done is it's just lifted the color slightly. However, for the photographs, I want there to be enough depth of color that the lip colour shows. That's why I've done the deeper matte tones first to really stain the lip and then just a simple wash of the lighter colour on top. So I've been debating sparkle or no sparkle but I think it wouldn't really be um, me uh, if the bridesmaids and I didn't have a little bit of sparkle on the eye. So I'm gonna take a bit of the Silver Moon Sparkle Shadow just on my ring finger, and I'm just gonna press that into the inner corner of the eye and just sweep it along the shadow just for a little bit of something extra to add that ethereal bridal finish to the makeup look. So there we go guys, that is my first practice at <laughs> my bridesmaids makeup look for the wedding on Friday. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm, I guess this might be it. I'm gonna put all the products I used into a bag so that when the bridesmaids come we can sanitize it all and share the key products so that we all achieve a similar look. And um, yeah. There we go. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for all responding to um, the comments under my last video. Yes, we want to see your bridesmaids look. So here you go. Um, I hope the lighting was better. This room still isn't quite ready for um, the grand tour, but I promise you as soon as it's finished, a tour you will surely have. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, bye. Of course, of course someone is drilling outside. <clears throat> they stopped. Okay, we'll go for it just in case they have. No, nope, there it goes. What to do?